no idea what to do to balance your hormones, never fear. I'm going to tell you what not to do to balance your hormones. Why? Because far too many women are spending way too much time on that part of the equation. They're doing all of the wrong things. I'm going to tell you what not to do so that you can spend more time on what to do so that you can get healthier faster and start loving your life. You guys know the drill. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure that you're subscribed and also hit that cute little bell button because that way you'll be notified every time I throw down a new video because you know that you want to know everything that's happening around the Kelly O Show. Everybody, Kelly Alexa here, fitness fanatic, serial entrepreneur, confidence coach, and most recently, keto convert. Some might even call me a crazy keto convert, and I'm okay with that because it's all good. I'm also somebody who has been dealing with uh, hormonal imbalance and been on the hormonal struggle bus for the better part of probably 12 to 13 years now. And finally, I can say I'm at the point now where I've reached what I call hormonal happiness, and that's what I want for you. So everything that I've learned, everything that I'm learning and continuing to learn with the help of my functional medicine doctor, I'm here to teach you, and I'm here to help you save time so that you don't waste time like I did in the past. So what are we wasting time for? Let's get started. Okay, so I just wanna be super blunt as we dive into this video on what not to do to balance your hormones because just as I was doing what we call, you know, keyword research um, in preparing my video, um, when I was on YouTube and, and doing some searching for, you know, what videos were out there, what people are searching for on this topic, right there gave me my answer to, to, it really bit just reinforced everything that I've been observing on the other social platforms. And that is exactly the first point that I want to make. The biggest point I want to stress with what not to do is stop with the self-diagnosis. I, I see everybody making the same mistakes that I did for years. And I think a lot of this comes from people really maybe not being aware of the significance of hormonal imbalance and the significance of what happens when your hormones start to change and go downhill, but also, so not only the significance of what happens when your hormones start to change and how that can negatively affect your body um, and, and your state of mind and your libido and, and how it can show up in negative physical symptoms, but also on the flip side, how if you address that, we live in such a wonderful time with so many medical advances that if you address that with the appropriate functional medicine doctor, you can be looking forward like I am, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, looking forward to the aging part of your life and looking forward to the decades in your 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and beyond uh, as times that you can be enjoying some of the best times of your life. I mean, honestly, I wouldn't trade, I wouldn't wanna go back to my 20s or 30s for anything. I feel better now about myself than I did in my 20s, in my 30s, in my 40s. It is a wonderful, wonderful thing. So the biggest mistake that I see across the board um, again, when I, when I was doing research just on YouTube, I see people searching for um, hormone balancing diet, hormone ba how, to, how to balance hormones with food. Um, people, I see this happen on Facebook all the time, all the time. I share it with my husband. I'll say, went on Facebook again tonight. And I saw some woman inevitably will post something on her wall and she'll say, you know, and, and I don't even know how she'll introduce it, but she'll say something to the effect of, you guys help me out here. I'm this age. I'm dealing with weight gain around my middle. I'm having hot flashes. It usually has something to do with hot flashes, sleep, and libido. And, you know, but obviously stuff that's going on with your hormones and menopause, perimenopause, postmenopause. She's putting stuff out there 
And usually by the time I see it in my feed, there's close to 200 comments from other women. And there's all these women chiming in, giving, you know, advice, medical advice. And I'm using air quotes there because I, you know, I don't necessarily know that people are, are attempting to be a doctor or attempting to give medical advice. But in other words, like, why are you going to Facebook and your friends and people that you barely know on Facebook asking for advice about your hormones and asking them to diagnose you and fix you and tell you what to do and what you should try as opposed to going to a medical professional and somebody that maybe you know has actually created results. This is what I see time and time again, all over the place. When I do research for creating content for my blog, for my YouTube channel, wherever it is, this is part of what professional content creators do. We research what people are researching so that we can create content to serve people who are doing, who are researching this so that we can serve that need, right? We, we see what people are researching and then we create content to answer those questions, right? Um, and when you see what people are searching, you see the, the lack of understanding of the big picture. So my biggest what not to do and don't worry, I don't have a list of 100 not to do's. This video should not be too long. Do we think we can do that? Do I think Kelly Alexa can do that? Um, stop self-diagnosing. Understand that when your body starts going through these changes, when your skin changes, when you start having adult onset acne, when you start having headaches all of the time, when you start having gas and bloating all the time, when your libido goes to hell, when you can't sleep, when you have night sweats, hot flashes, um, when you have sudden weight gain, when your weight, when you gain weight in different places, all of a sudden it's around your core as opposed to maybe you, you typically gain it around your hips and your thighs. Um, when you suddenly are working out and you're gaining weight as opposed to losing it if you just can't lose weight or you're working out and you're gaining weight i mean any number of those things are happening and you're going to facebook or you're trying to figure out what the best you know foods are that are going to balance your hormones for you you're you're going down a path that is never going to solve things for you you need to see a functional medicine doctor and get help and get a comprehensive treatment plan so Stop with the self-diagnosis. Stop thinking that there's a diet out there. And that leads really into my, my second point. And I'm, yes, I'm completely glancing at my notes at my cheat sheet here, but I wanna make sure that I say everything. Um, it's not a diet and exercise thing. Now, this is the biggest mistake that I fell into as well for years is, and what I mean by this is, a lot of women, when their body starts changing, um, when they all of a sudden are working out around, you know, maybe it's around late 30s, maybe it's in your 40s, maybe it's not until you're in your 50s. Um, it can be different ages for different people. But a lot of women who maybe have been into fitness and have been in shape for a long time, when this happens, instead of them thinking that it's, oh, it's my hormones, it's my thyroid, it's my cortisol, whatever, they're gonna think, I'm not working out hard enough, I'm not dieting hard enough, I need to cut my calories more. So if you limit yourself to thinking that this is a fitness thing, and this is also something I see all the time on Facebook, I see women going into these fitness groups saying, I have hot flashes, and they're, they're sharing a litany of symptoms that are clearly hormonally related, and then they're saying, what workout should I do? Should I do step aerobics? Should I do spinning? What's gonna get rid of this belly fat that I can't, all of a sudden I have belly fat and, and I have night sweats and blah, blah, blah. What workout should I do? It's not just a workout. It, it's, not, it's not just fitness. You need to fix what's underneath the hood and that can't just be done by you know, having orange juice or having 200 less calories. It's not just a fitness thing. This is a bigger picture thing. And the sooner you can wrap your head around that and realize that you need an expert to help you, the better, okay? So stop self-diagnosing. Realize this is bigger bigger than you. This is not just a fitness problem. And, and you need help. And you need the help of an expert. And really that, 
that perfectly segues into mistake number three. Mistake number three is going to the wrong expert. Now the wrong expert could be what I've just mentioned, someone on Facebook, someone on in a fitness group, but it also can be, and I'm probably gonna piss some people off here, but I don't care because I'm, I feel very strongly about this. Do not go to your primary care doctor and think they can help you with your hormones. Do not go to your OBGYN and think you, they can help you with your hormones. Let me repeat that. Do not go to your OBGYN and think they can help you with your hormones. Most of them will probably completely screw you over. And let me say that again. Most OBGYNs are not trained in hormones. Most OBGYNs are going to put you on the pill, which will mess you up for years. Most OBGYNs are going to put you on the pill or, um, I mean, I still remember when my funct first functional medicine doctor had me do, wanted me to do a uterine ablation. I'll, I'll, that'll be another topic we talk about in another video. And I asked my OBGYN to do this and she's like, why would I do this? I had massive bleeding. I had tumors on my ovaries, massive bleeding. Her idea of solving that problem was to put me on the pill. She put me on low, low estrin fay, which made me gain like 40 pounds and also gave me migraines. And if you look up the side effects of low, low estrin fay, it's one of the worst birth control pills on the market. But so many of these doctors, I mean, don't even get me started, will like throw out the birth control pill and spironolactone like it's candy. And they'll give these things to women who are like, oh, that's gonna solve my adult acne? Okay, I'll take it. And they're not gonna tell you all of the other things it's doing to screw you later in life. And let me tell you, it will screw you. It might solve a problem in the short term, but it's going to screw you and destroy your hormones later. Don't go to your primary care. Don't go to your OBGYN. Don't go to a dermatologist. You need to go to a functional medicine doctor, period, end of point. Someone who specializes in bioidentical hormonal replacement treatment. Of course, I will strongly recommend, and I will link down to her below, my doctor, the doctor that I'm seeing, Dr. Ruthie Harper in Austin, Texas, takes telemedicine patients. She's wonderful. I can also strongly recommend um, Dr. Marvin Riska. He's the first guy I saw. He's out in Phoenix, Arizona. There's another lady I've heard of. Actually, there's, an, there's several doctors. I'm gonna link all of them below. There's another one in Austin who I almost went to see, very holistic. Um, and there's another gentleman I'm going completely blank on. I interview him on my podcast. Dr. Sean Tassone, he's also in uh, Austin. He's very, very good. Uh, Dr. Lane Sebring is also uh, in um, Austin, Texas. Um, I, I will recommend some of these folks down below, but you've absolutely got to see a specialist. Are these the only people in the country? No, these are people that I just happen to have a personal experience with. This is what you need to have done. So this is the big picture of what not to do. Stop self-diagnosing. Stop going to Facebook. Stop thinking this is a fitness problem. Stop thinking that, that this is something you can solve with food. This is something that is bigger than yourself. This is something that you need to see a specialist with and stop going to the wrong specialist. Am I making sense now? Does this make sense? Is any of this ringing a bell? My last what not to do in closing is really stop thinking that this is something that's gonna get better on its own. And I know that this is what a lot of women do. A lot of women subconsciously, unconsciously keep doing the same thing, which is I'll get blood work next. And I did that for a long time. I procrastinated when my friend Whitney kept telling me to get blood work. I procrastinated and procrastinated and, and kept putting it off and putting it off. And I think a lot of people just subconsciously maybe hope that things will just get better. They're not gonna get better. Hormones will never just get better on their own. Um, there's maybe <laughs> one or two percent of very, very lucky people who maybe naturally balance on their own or, or just have a very easy time of it. 
99% of people are going to have a tough time once their hormones decline. There are just too many environmental factors that are at play, um, too many stress factors in our lives, just too many factors that are causing our hormones to decline and they need to be balanced and they need to be balanced professionally. So please do yourself a favor. In closing, don't think that this is gonna get better by itself. Get some help and get the right help. You feel me? All right, so how many of you have been listening to this video and are just nodding your head going, okay, all of this has been me. I can tell you that as I record this video, pretty much everything that I've talked about in the very beginning of this video was all me before I finally got my head screwed on straight, got some blood work, got to see a doctor. And I can tell you this, let me just say this, when I finally got my blood work done for the first time, when I finally went to see Dr. Riska out in Arizona and he explained what my blood work said about me, I cried. When he explained what my blood work meant and what the treatment would do and what my future could be, I cried because I had hope. It is the worst feeling in the world to feel like you are in a body that doesn't work anymore. It's the worst feeling in the world to feel like you have no hope. I just actually had a conversation today with a, a gal who is going to be a new coaching client of mine. And that's exactly what she was saying. She said, I haven't had hope in so long. I haven't felt like I could. She said, I don't want this to be my story. I don't want my, my weight and the way I look to be my story anymore. And that doesn't have to be your story. Um, you aren't stuck where you are, but you just have to make a move to stop being stuck. So if this video and everything I've said is resonating with you, I'd love to have you like the video and leave a comment. I'd really love to hear from you. I'd love to know what your questions are, what you're confused about, what your experience has been, um, how I can help you. What have I not shared in this video? What do you wanna see me cover in videos coming up? Let me know down below. Okay, so what are your next steps? Honestly, it's super simple. I pretty much alluded to this earlier in the video. Here's what to do. We talked about what not to do earlier in the video. What do you do to balance your hormones? Very simply, down below, I am going to link up to this and I'm going to save you time and money in this process. I want you to number one, go get your blood work done first. If this whole process is new to you and you are not currently with a functional medicine doctor, you haven't gotten your blood work done first, I'm gonna save you a step in the process which is gonna save you time, it's going to accelerate the process and it's also gonna save you money. Typically what would happen if you didn't do it my way is you would go, you would make an appointment with a new doctor, the doctor would do the intake form, they would interview you, they would then order your blood work, you would go get your blood work done, they would wait for your blood work to come back. Then you would have another appointment, which you would pay for. And then they would order your, um, your bioidentical hormonal replacement treatment. What I'm gonna suggest is go out and get your blood work done first. I'm gonna link up to a company that I work with called Ulta Lab Tests. Um, they will save you a ton of money on um, your lab tests. I saved at least twelve hundred dollars i think the last time now if that kind of money scares you just know you're not going to spend that kind of money so when i when i had a comprehensive comprehensive lab draw which i do probably twice a year it was about five hundred dollars but if i would have not done that through ulta lab tests i probably would have paid about fifteen hundred dollars maybe more maybe maybe $1,600. Um, I hope I'm saying that correctly. So you're not always, you're, you don't get overwhelmed by how much um, it's going to cost. That, it, that too is a mistake I think too many people make is they think, oh my gosh, this is gonna be so crazy expensive. I'm happy to answer any questions if you have any questions about how much I pay. Um, I've referenced that in the other videos that I'm gonna link here shortly. Um, but trust me when I say you can change your entire life by getting your blood work done and by going to see a functional medicine doctor. So number one, go to Ulta Labs, get your blood work done. They, 
you, you pay for your labs on ultalabtest.com, then you get them done at a Quest Labs. You will get a copy of your blood work. They will also send a copy to uh, the doctor or you can just print out the copy at home and take it with you. Then you make an appointment with a functional medicine doctor of your choice. Of course, you can see if you wanna go see my doctor. Of course, I recommend her, she's amazing. Um, but the whole world can't go see her, so you can research whoever you want. Go see your doctor, get in to see a, a fantastic doctor, have them look at your blood work, have them get you on a comprehensive bioidentical hormonal replacement treatment, and, and, a, and then also get yourself, ideally somebody who can advise you on you know a solid diet and exercise program. Um, and then equally as important is a strong focus on self-care and stress management. I can't, I can't emphasize that enough. It's not about getting on bioidenticals and killing yourself at the gym. It's adequate diet and exercise. Now, I definitely am gonna urge you to go look at some of the videos that I've posted recently about what I'm doing with keto because that's tied in with my functional medicine doctor and everything that she has me doing. So you definitely wanna look at that video. I'll link it up. Do a reasonable diet and, and exercise program. Stress management and self-care are so important at this phase in your life. You've got to focus on that. So that's it. I want you to go out and get blood work. Get yourself with a functional medicine doctor. Get, get yourself a reasonable diet and exercise program. Make sure you watch my keto videos um, because you definitely should be checking that out. Do some research on that. Um, and then focus on stress reduction and self-care. Period. End of point. Hope you like this video. Let me know what questions you have. I'll see you guys next time. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you check out these last two videos. Number one, my keto experience. I think this is going to inspire you again. I went keto because of the guidance of my functional medicine doctor. And number two, this video over here on my bioidentical hormonal replacement advice. I think this is gonna be super helpful for all of you.